Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, July 31st, 2013. I'm Darko. I have a lot of news, interesting news to get to. I plan on doing four videos. Um, also, this is the 31st, so just beware. Uh, revenue collectors are out in full force today, um, trying to basically collect revenue uh, so they can keep getting paid. Also, to legitimize their authority. I'm talking about the cops, of course pretty interesting when they uh, write you the ticket they say you have offended the city of Schmucktown USA will have you offended the people no because most average people understand if you didn't have your taillight on or bad turn signal they don't really care now you offended the city which is a corporation not the actual people so again they write tickets fulfill quotas to not just collect revenue to maintain their power but also to legitimize their uh, authority over you. Just be aware, the last couple days of the month, especially today, they are out. Okay, so I saw this article, uh, not article, but this video um, streaming from uh, one of my, sub, uh, basically a subscription, Syria News. It says here, British women have started signing up for jihad in Syria alongside with Swedish British terrorists. Now, this is interesting because both these individuals had probably better English than uh, you or I. So, um, highly educated, degrees and stuff, uh, uh, living a good life uh, in Britain, but at the same time complaining about how people are, don't like how they're wearing the veil. So, wearing the full veil. Um, you have to go in there and watch this video. I want to play some of it. It says SyrianFreePress.net, so they're all carrying it. But the problem is, is that this is probably from the BBC themselves. It's pretty ironic because when I watch this, it's actually a propaganda for these Muslim immigrant or Muslims inside. Actually, this British woman that's a Muslim converted over. She was actually born in Britain. So, but my point is, is that. It's hard to tell you because I read all the articles about how the European nations, how NATO nations, the UK and the US, uh, who are all funding these terrorists are, and jihadists, are basically uh, complaining now that they're worried and they're concerned that these terrorists are now going to come back out of Syria and come back to, say, Germany or Britain or the US, and they're going to become more radicalized, right? They're going to be well trained. Well, it's funny because they go through here. And they start showing uh, these people, right? And uh, this woman, uh, she, they basically are living in this house. Um, I got to show it to you here, how this guy comes home. I mean, this is a nice house. These are terrorists. These are foreigners. These are not Syrians. These are Sunni. Um, they claim to be Sunnis. And basically, these are. this is in the Aleppo countryside where people have been had to leave their homes because of terrorists like this. Uh, lynching people, stealing from them, kidnapping, raping, blowing up mosques uh, and, and churches. And so they, it's funny because she goes, she basically says that uh, we haven't invaded any land, taken their houses or their food, which I found kind of interesting because they're living in someone else's home. They're working alongside terrorists that are stealing, like I said. They are abducting and kidnapping people for ransom. They are raping uh, women and killing men. It says we haven't done that. Well, it's funny too because they go in there and they talk about her husband, um, who's, I don't know, his expression is just so guilty as sin. Uh, these people do not look happy. And he was, they were talking about how he lives on a, only a measly $130 a month uh, as a fighter. Now, you, you, where is that money coming from? That money is actually coming from the UK and the US directly funding cash to these jihadists to come into Syria and flood in there as mercenaries is what they are. And they go in there and they basically uh, show these women uh, walking around, going to the store, driving in a car, carrying Kalishnikovs, and, um, and they're in the store, and they have all these, they have actually grocery stores up and running and everything, where they go and they use American and UK taxpayer dollars to, uh, so these terrorists can go in there and to a market. And, and what the sad part is, is that they actually admit that the women did not even want to go there to begin with. The man went there, and then she kind of went there, and, um, and then they brought their children there, and 
And they basically said that the, that, that the women didn't like it, but then they got used to it. And then they said, oh, well, the children wanted to go home right away, but then they just got used to it. Well, this was a long intro, intro but I had to lay that groundwork uh, for what I'm getting into now. Uh, these people are occupying a, a, a land that is not their, not theirs, and they're being paid by Western, quote, democratic nations to do it. So then you come across an article like this from Daily Times. This is, again, this is a, a, a what I consider semi-propaganda, but they have some good information in there. Air raids kill 11 children in Syria. Rebels down military helicopter near Damascus airport and a car bomb kill leading Kurdish politician. Again, remember what I talked about, Lee Kaplan talking about, oh, we got to help the Kurds. Now all of a sudden the Kurds are getting abducted by these militants. Deaths in Homs or homes come as troops press an offensive against remaining rebel areas there while in the Aleppo province. The raid comes exactly a year into the rebel takeover of a targeted town of Anadan. So see, rebel takeover, they're actually occupying these lands right now. They downed a military helicopter with ground-to-air missiles near Damascus, killing a leading Kur uh, Kurdish po politician with a car bomb says the number of people killed in the regime air raid in Anadan has risen uh, to seven children and three women. So these people, and this is coming from the Syrian Obs Observatory for Human Rights, this is actually uh, a semi, I would imagine it's, uh, I covered this before, it's, it is in the UK based and it's a pro-Zionist. Um, you have to take in consideration what's happening here, but also you have to take in consideration that these people are not Syrians and that they're being paid there to occupy this land as mercenaries and terrorists. Uh, but these Islamist rebels or mercenary terrorists use, quote, sophisticated ground-to-air missiles to down the helicopter in Damascus. Moving on here, uh, we have Syrian army advances in Aleppo despite, despite militants massacres they achieved on Friday. Uh, great progress, and it says here, uh, Khalidia and Jurat Shia regions of home city in the uh, neighborhoods of Damascus countryside. See, London based Syrian uh, Observatory for Human Rights said the opposition militants in Khan al Assal of Aleppo, western countryside, have executed more than 50 Syrian soldiers by shooting them dead. Said, and uh, Hasaka Sanda said that insurgents committed another massacre by. Uh, against the village of Makbara in the rural city where they executed seven citizens in response to the people's rejection of acts carried out by the militants in the region. Syrian army secures grips on Holmes' uh, town that we just talked about, also Khalid bin al-Walid Mosque. Uh, Takfiri militants kidnap Italian priests in Syria. Foreign-backed militants fighting against the Syrian government have kidnapped an Italian priest in the northern city of Raqqa. The members of the Al-Qaeda-linked Islamic State of Iraq Raqqa fell to the militants on Monday. This is crazy. This is so typical. Again, these militants have been abducting UN workers and stuff, and journalists. And a lot of these journalists are there to uh, to uh, propagate the narrative, the Zionist and Western narrative, a regime change, as if it's a civil war when it's not. Syrian authorities had actually expelled the Italian priest from the country last year over his anti-government activities. He had been acting as an unofficial diplomat for the Syrian opposition, trying to heal sectarian rifts between activists and a bid to create a unified or uh, united opposition. So there you go. Syrian militants take 200 Kurds hostage. So this is big news. Foreign-backed militants fighting against the Syrian government have taken 200 Kurdish civilians hostage. Then you have Kurdish militia says all Syrian Kurds must resist Islamist rebels. Faction issues a call to arms after assassination of their key politician. It has been presumed that the Islamist rebels did so as part of a campaign against Kurdish resistance against their control over the region. They say it threatens to drag Turkey in the war as well since Turkish officials have always backed the rebels specifically on hopes of curbing Kurdish independence bids and the civil war, like I said, foreign invasion by mercenaries, seems to instead be providing a great opportunity for the Kurds to establish a de facto autonomy. So this is so interesting. This is right after this I hate to say it, but that's what I like to say, douchebag, uh, Lee Kaplan, who's a big Zionist, um, he, this is what he talked about in this interview with this, um, uh, he calls a loser Ken O'Keefe, who basically called him out for what he is, a shill. Uh, and he was talking about the main thing he kept talking about, he was diverting away from the point and saying, well, you know, we have to help these Kurdish people create an autonomous state, and I hope the West uh, supports that, and then all of a sudden now you have this. So you see that they just change it. They're just changing the uh, the uh, policy or changing the plans. Well, the plans are still the same, regime change, but how they go about it to achieve that goal uh, is always being altered. They're always altering it. And you could say, what? The enemies of my enemy are my best friends.
which is why I said about a year ago in a video that the Zionist plan a proxy state uh, of Kurdistan. So uh, this is what this individual represents, defending America for knowledge and action. So DAFCA is a pro-American, pro-Israel activist group on U.S. campuses devoted to countering protesting against Palestinian demonstrations. It was formed because, in its view, mainstream Jewish organizations were insufficiently dedicated to going after the enemy. Right. <laughs> it's actively primarily on campuses in San Francisco, although the mainstream Jewish organizations there are trying to distance themselves from its work. Al-Qaeda member confirms terrorist entry to Syria, Damascus, July 27th. A member of the Al-Qaeda terrorist network recognized that a large number of its members in Europe, the Caucasus, Afghanistan, North Africa, infiltrated Syria through the Turkish border since the conflict began. They quoted statements of a militant of the terrorist organization who lives in the region of Fateh, Istanbul, and made such confessions to the Turkish newspaper Taraf. Many Chechens and Af Afghan fighters entered uh, Syrian territory through the border of Turkey more than two years ago, explained the informant. He explained the intelligence agents and the international military are in the borders between the two countries and provide information on how to organize and launch attacks on Syria. Like you had the Lebanese journalist, a female, she was uh, basically going after she was kidnapped and abducted. Uh, she was handed over to the Turkish military and she basically was showing how the Turkish military actually had pickup trucks and were uh, supplying these militants to go back into Syria. Other rebels remain in this territory as I said here, as they come in with their families and now reside in Syria, he pointed out, which is true, right? We just talked about that. The source clarified that al-Qaeda wounded during the fighting against the Syrian armed forces are evacuated to Turkish hospitals for treatment and some return to their countries of origin. Uh, they also are treated in Israel as well. We've covered that twice in two separate occasions. He added that the Chechens are the most dominant group within al-Qaeda, made up of about a thousand fighters. Remember, who was, uh, who was uh, Chechnyan, right? That, that's the Zarnia brothers. Those were the ter Boston bombers, at least the alleged Boston bombers, which is headed up by, again, like an Osama bin Laden boogeyman, Salafist. I've uh, killed lots of Arabs in my life, and there's no problem with that. So, And that was Naftali Bennett, an Israeli cabinet member. He's uh, basically declared his backing for simply killing Palestinian pr prisoners rather than bringing them to trial. To catch terrorists, you have to simply kill them. So I've killed lots of Arabs in my life. And there's no problem with that. Remember, I covered that, too, where they actually view the Palestinians, especially the younger generations, the kids, as blades of grass where they need trimming every once in a while. So this is it's genocide, no doubt about it. That's what Lee Kaplan supports, obviously, or apparently. Fresh Iraq attacks leave 33 dead and 73 wounded. So that's crazy in the latest violence. Although they were, there were many attacks, they did not seem coordinated. Then you have July, deadliest month in Iraq since 2008. Said they killed 989 people across the country. Al-Qaeda affiliate claims responsibility for Iraq bombings. An Al-Qaeda affiliated group responsible for the wave of bombings killed 60 people on Monday. Says it was facing open war from insurgents bent on plunging the country into sectarian strife, which is the goal, right? So it's funny that the West is, um, they're arming Al-Qaeda, they're backing Al-Qaeda, and yet, um, this is what you have. You know, ooh, we got to get Al Qaeda. So, like I said, you can actually get schizophrenia from covering or getting into this information if you really want to. Uh, jailbreak. Security found lacking in Iraq, Libya, Pakistan. First, you had Le uh, Libya, where it was uh, 1,300 people, prisoners were let go. Now there's all kinds of instability, destabilization. Uh, Pakistan, now all of a sudden, you know, you had 300 people jailbreak. And uh, now in Iraq, so you know this is way too, that's way too coincidental and coordinated all to happen at the same time. I've seen this happen before in waves. So this this is like intelligence agencies uh, 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 basically carrying this out. And I saw this Syrian presidency launches Instagram uh, account to post Assad activities and photos. So. So dozens of photos have been published on the account created under the name Syrian presidency. Include uh, the president's visit to Raqqa and inspecting field conditions in Baba Amar area of homes last year after the army seized control over it. It's noteworthy that the Syrian presidency has established earlier accounts on social networking sites like Twitter and Facebook after the protests erupted in the country since more than two years. So I guess you would have to be kind of smart to do this because the terrorists are using social networks. But when you look at mainstream media, what do they say? As thousands die, Assad takes selfies. So he joins Instagram, fails to capture civil war. See how double-sided it is? 
It says here that uh, one commenter, probably a troll, said this is not the real Syria. Well, funny because when you see uh, U.S. presidents rolling around smiling and cheering, you could say, well, this isn't the real U.S. This is GGN. Thank you.